Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Open TTD tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at towns and cities. So let's go find some, shall we? Right, so uh, over here where we started our tutorials, uh, we've got Rainford here. Let's have a look at this town. Now, if we open this up, you see in the top corner here, uh, in the information, uh, it, gives the city, it gives the town or city name. And then if it is a city, it will say the word city next to it. Let's find that one that isn't a city, for example. Let's try, let's try Chatworth. There we are. Chatworth isn't a city. It's just a town. And it's just got the word name next to it. It doesn't have the word city. That's how you tell the difference between a town and a city. Uh, we'll look at what is the difference between a town and a city later on. But that's how you tell which one's which. Now, what, to get this window up, all I did was click on the name. And it brings up this window. So we can go find another one if we watch. Here's another one. Just click on the name and it brings up this information window. There we are. We've got uh, uh, one city and two towns that we're looking at. Well, let's have a look at the information that's on there and see what we can find out about these things and what that means about the game and how we play. So, uh, first up uh, is the population. The population is a very important thing when looking around the map and looking and thinking about what you're doing. You want to work in cities with a good amount of population. And the reason for this is, is that the bigger the population, the more people that can come to your passenger services and so forth. And uh, the more people who come to your passenger services, and the more money, of course. Um, there's some information around here about uh, the number of houses that are in that city. So you can see uh, if it's a very densely populated city, or if it's a very spread out city. If it's a very spread out city, you get a high number of houses with a high population. And if it's a very dense and compact city, you get a, a low number of houses with a high population. Now, dense and more compact cities tend to be better for transporting passengers and mail. And the reason for this is, is that when you place a station down like this, remember our catchment area, the little kind of bluey purpley boxes around our white boxes? Well, we can only get so much of the city in our catchment area. If we zoom in, you can see, and let's try just making things transparent so we can see the catchment area a little bit better. If I was to put a train station here in this little gap, you can see that I'm only covering a certain amount of buildings within the city. So, the denser and bigger the buildings, the better for us, because then the ones that we are capturing are more valuable, they carry more passengers. Because if we have a look, uh, if we just use our question mark button over here, we can click on any of the buildings and we'll get some land area information. Okay, so you can see that this, if I click on this building here, cargo accept is seven or eight passengers. Whereas if I click on these houses over here, it's three to eight passengers. All these houses over here, that's also three to eight. I wonder if there's anything else. Three to eight out here. Um, now all the all these buildings on the outside are three to eight. But if you click on these bigger buildings in the middle, uh, that one is also three to eight, but it's got some goods on there where uh, these ones on the outside are just males. So you can actually find out what these buildings are going to give you in terms of what they provide in the catchment area. Okay. So, going back to our little window here, um, you can see, yes, that there's a number of houses in the city. It tells you the number of passengers last month, and it tells you the maximum number of passengers last month. So it's telling you how many passengers could have gone into your stations from that city, and how many actually did. Uh, that way you can see how much of the city uh, you are transporting. At this point, in this particular example, we're transporting 416 passengers a month where we could be transporting 1,363. So we probably need to get some more transport services put into this city to be able to get the, all the passengers transported around. If you're already transporting all the maximum passengers, then you probably got your service either fully flashed out or you may have too much transport in a city. And the same goes for the amount of mail last month. Now, the next uh, piece of text on this list is probably the one, well, one of the most important ones, but we'll come back to that in a moment. The next one down here, we've got a button, location. And what that does, it takes you to the city. So if for some reason you've scrolled off somewhere else and you're looking at another city and you want to compare it and you think, oh, no, I'm not sure about that one, or this one's not too bad either, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can click on the location button and it will send you back to the town or city. 
Now, if you don't want to go back to the town city, but you want to open a viewpoint, you can hold control and then click the location button. And there you go. It opens a viewpoint onto that city. Now, remember in viewpoints, when we looked earlier on, you can actually do things in viewpoints. You can actually build stuff in viewpoints. Uh, and it's not just a, uh, a looking glass. You can actually, it's a doing glass, if you wish. Right, so that's what happens when you click that. The next up in this list is local authority. And this one can be quite important. So you click that button and this second box appears. What can we do with this second box? Well, first thing is it tells you your ratings. It tells me that I'm outstanding, which is fantastic. Um, if you have more than one company playing in this particular game, you will have them listed here. And it will tell you how good the local authority thinks each one. That tends to be a combination of a few factors. Firstly, it's a combination of uh, how good your ratings are at your various different uh, stations. So, for example, we've got a station over here and the ratings are poor. So that's probably that might bring our rating down. And our ratings over here... Uh, are very poor. So that's going to bring our ratings down too. But consistently doing a uh, service in a city will bring up your ratings. Constantly running a service, making connections with other cities, providing different forms of transport will all bring up your uh, rating with the local authority. What will bring that rating down? <laughs> well, one thing that they don't like is when you delete and destroy buildings. So if I go into the city centre and say, oh, I need to make room for a bus depot and go get rid of this massive building over here, kablamo, they don't like that. You can see I've gone from, a, uh, from outstanding down to excellent. So if you delete loads of buildings in the city, they will get quite annoyed with you and your rating will go down. Another thing that they don't like is adjusting the land height. If I go out here, just the edge of the city, and bring up the land, you can see I've gone down from excellent down to very good. So, if I keep doing this, I go down to good, and down to medium, then poor, then very poor. And once you get down to this sort of level, the town won't even allow you to put a new station in the city. You try and do it, it says, the local authority refuses to allow this. Well, there's a way around that a little bit. You can either wait for your rating to go up a bit by providing a good service with the existing stations you've got, or one of the things that actually makes it improve is by adding trees. So I like to add some trees. So you just drag over like that with some trees. And adding trees slowly increases your rating. Okay, they, they, there you see, I've gone from poor all the way up to medium. And with medium, I would be able to now put something in that town. I can go over here and I can put in a bus station where I couldn't do that before. So that is your rating with the local authority. Down here are some options. There's some advertising campaigns and it tells you what these things do in this little box beneath. So this is a small advertising uh, uh, campaign which will attract more passengers and cargo to your transport services. Uh, and it's going to cost you 15000 if you want to do that. There's a medium, there's a, a large one. You can fund local road construction, which really doesn't have any benefit to you, except if you've got a competitor in your town. Let's do that, and so you can see. Um, if you've got a competitor in your town running buses, it's going to be disruptive. You can see these little um, vehicles that show up. They don't look very well textured in my uh, graphics pack, which I'm using. I'm using the Z-based graphics pack, but high-resolution pictures. And you can see that these diggers appear all over the place. And you've, I, one of them's actually blocked in my vehicle inside the depot there. Very disruptive in an opponent's town. Next one you can do is build a statue of your company owner. I believe this does help in some sort of way, uh, but to be honest, it's uh, not. It's a one-time thing, whereas uh, the road construction will eventually go away. It lasts for six months, uh, or rather up to six months, uh, and then you can do it again. Uh, fun new buildings, we'll come back to that one in a moment. And buy exclusive transport rights. If you buy exclusive transport rights, nobody else in your town uh, will start, uh, will continue to receive passengers, goods, or mail, or anything like that, into your stations. Okay, um, just you, just your company. So if I buy exclusive transport rights, nobody else will have any passengers or mail in town. Um, I, can, I can't really do that now. There's no other players in this tutorial, so uh, it's no, not really worth doing. So, there's a couple of things that I've skipped on during this tutorial. Uh, one of them was the town growth, and the other one was funding new buildings. Let's go over to a new blank town. 
let's start over here let's have a look at this one is it a town or a city well we click on it and you see that it is not a city it's just got the name um there's an there's a few more around here let me see if i can find a city no are you a city no yes right okay let's these two these two will do these two will do so we've got sinhead cross down here which is a city and we've got punt Bay, which is also a city both of these say the town is not growing and this will be very often the case if the town has no interaction with it at all let's put a single bus service in the town from here to here and let's do the same down in this town let's put a simple bus service in from there to there now providing services within a town will help it to grow so let's just do that I'm not necessarily placing uh, things in the town in a way which is good for profit. I'm just doing it to show you uh, stuff actually going around. So same thing here, new vehicle. I'm just going to pop a bus in. We've seen me do this before in previous tutorials, how to uh, create vehicles, how to lay stations, and uh, how to set orders. So we just get that done quickly. Right, now if we fast forward just a little bit and bring up our information about this town, and the information about this city there we go and we just fast forward and let both of these uh, buses cash in you can see that both here you can see uh, now are saying they are growing the town is growing now the difference between a town and a city is a town will grow at a, at a certain rate whereas a city will grow at twice that rate okay cities grow twice uh, twice as fast as towns. So what else affects the rate that a city grows at? Well, what affects the, city, the rate that a city grows at is the following. And th this is a, actually a quite a simple but complex sentence that you need to remember when growing the size of a town. A town will increase and get a growth rate that which is good if there are between one and five stations of any type within the town which have received and sent at least one unit of cargo in the past two months so let me just say that again just so you can get that a town will grow at a, a, at a, uh, at a, uh, a specified rate if there are between one and five stations within a town which have received and sent at least one item of cargo in the last two months so to optimize that to get a town or city to grow at the fastest possible rate let's see uh, to get this town over here growing at the fastest possible rate what we need is five uh, let me see we need let's let's put in one over here uh, one over here and one over here yeah one, one over here uh, we need five stations within a city which have received um, passengers in the past few months so we go from uh, cross to central to west uh, to north and then we go cross and then east we're just gonna make this vehicle I'm gonna take that out that top cross as well I'm going to get, make this vehicle go around in circles and then uh, we're going to just clone it so we get manage to get a few of them so we make sure that we make a vehicle uh, go around every every couple of months so we're going to get four of them going around there we go so we're optimizing that particular sentence that I said the growth sentence okay we are making sure that uh, we have five stations within the town and there's a way to check whether it's in the town you can use the question mark and you can click on your station and it says owner Rentworth transport if I go out here into uh, into the fields a little bit and do another click it feels it, uh, it says fields owner Sinhead Cross okay or oh, owner uh, sorry um, local authority Sinhead Cross so that field is part of the town so we could put a station there and it'd count towards our growth sentence here, Sinhead Cloth is the cross is the local authority. If we go out too far, it'll say local authority none. If we put a station out that far, then the town won't accept it as part of its growth pattern. Okay. So we now have vehicles visiting all five of these stations, 
and it doesn't have to be passengers it could be mail it could be anything that is happening within the town however towns really just do passengers and mail so there we go now when we first started this town was growing every 70 odd days it's now growing every 24 days and if we fast forward you'll see that that town grows every 24 days will keep going down and down and down as these vehicles fulfill that uh, growth sentence okay so it does take time for the growth to increase and you have to make sure that you're visiting all five of your stations with your vehicles in the period of two months. Now I'm sure that's happening. I'm sure every station is getting at least uh, one passenger either dropped off or sent. Look, we've got four passengers there. We've got two passengers there. You know, we haven't got any passengers at uh, Sinhead Cross Central at the moment, but uh, we will be doing that. Right. Whilst we're waiting for that to grow, what other thing can affect growth? Well, there's two things that directly, well, sorry, three things that directly affect the grow growth, and we've spoken about two of them already. The first one is the fact of whether it's a city or a town. You don't really have control of that. What you do have control of is which places you decide to start in. If you want to start in a place which you're going to grow, try and find a city. The other thing is having five stations with at least one passenger being picked up and dropped off. Oh, sorry, one item of cargo. It doesn't have to be a passenger. One item of cargo picked up and dropped off within a town. Okay. Um, so, And the third thing is the local authority of funding new buildings. If you fund new buildings and click do it, you'll see that the town grows rate goes down, which is brilliant. Now it's growing every 15 days. And you can see that it's funded. And that lasts for nine months, okay? So that funded will stay there for nine months. After nine months, it will come back up to its normal growth rate and the word funded will disappear off the end. Okay, so those are the three things that affects a town's growth rate. You can see now we've gone past uh, the amount of time which those fund new buildings has been in there for and we're back to growing every 24 days if we click fund new buildings again we go back to funded which is fine if i was to click it again all it does is reset the counter okay so for example if it is going for nine months and one month in you click do it again and and fund new buildings it's only going to go again from nine months you don't get a double rate or you don't reduce that growth rate anymore okay so there we go. We have uh, lots of vehicles going around the town. And those are the three things that affect town growth rate. Nothing else does affect the town growth rate at all. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions and people playing open TTD that if you do mail as well, that would make it grow quicker. That's not true. If There's a lot of misconceptions that people think if you bring goods and services and industry into the town by providing the town with goods, that would make it grow that is not true either. Those are the only three things that affects the town's growth rate. Whether it's a city, five stations with one passive being, uh, one cargo being picked up and dropped off, and funding new buildings. Of course, it doesn't have to be five. It's one, two, five. But five does it uh, the most quickest, the most efficient way. Let's just uh, clone these vehicles here. Uh, just get a few more of them out there, making sure we're fulfilling... Uh, all of that requirements and definitely getting road vehicles to all of those places each month. Let them go round and round. You can see that the town is growing. Uh, the town will, when a town uh, grows, it will either place a piece of road or it will place a uh, it will place a uh, a building. Okay, so there are ways you can help a town or city grow. Um, now, one of these ways is to make sure it's not blocked off at all. If we put uh, some tracking over here, like this, this will block off the city a little bit as it expands. However, the town will eventually grow roads over the track and start building on the other side. It can slow it down a little bit, but it will not stop it from expanding that way. However, if you put diagonal tracking like this, uh, let's go like this. They cannot build roads over that. And a town only expands along its roads. So if you try and build a road across a diagonal track, you can't. You must remove the railway track. So, rule number one, if you want a town to grow, do not put diagonal pieces of track in. Okay. 
so there are that's something you can do to help the town grow. Another thing you can do to help, to help the town grow is because a town looks and when it does have a growth um, tick, it sees to, if it wants to grow out the roads or if it wants to put a building next to a piece of roads. What you can do is actually grow out the roads for it. If you grow out the roads for the town, the town has a greater chance of placing a uh, a building in its growth uh, moment rather than um, rather than placing a piece of road. A piece of road is not going to increase in the popula uh, not going to increase the population itself. So by building out a road network for the town, you help it increase uh, quicker because it it looks around and thinks, oh, I can place a building there. Oh, I can place a building there and doesn't place as many road tiles. So that's one thing you can do to make it do. Make sure it doesn't get strangled by any tracks or stations and build out road. Another thing is you can keep try and keep the land flat. A little bit of a flatter land does help, um, not much, um, but it is worth mentioning. The other thing worth mentioning is that if you're trying to grow a town which is next to the water, like this one, uh, as this town grows, it will struggle to grow much quicker when it's up against the side of the water. So if you have two towns which are identical, and one is inland and just surrounded by land and nothing else, and one's up against the water's edge, the one that's up against the water's edge will start growing slower because it's been strangled on that one side. So, to recap today's episode, to find out more about a town or city, you can click on the town name. Clicking on the town name tells you whether it is a town or city because it says city next to the name if it is a city. There's a various number of pieces of stats that tells you about how many people are in that city and how much stuff you're transporting. It also gives you the, the growth rate and whether you can go uh, and warp to that particular town or city like so. The local authority button gives you different things that you can do within the local authority and also gives you all your ratings. You can also rename the town or city if you are the server admin or the game admin uh, in multiplayer or if you are in single player. Uh, the town growth rate is uh, affected by three things, whether it's a town or city, um, the number of uh, uh, the, the growth sentence, which is um, one to five stations within a town's boundaries, which have received and sent at least one item of cargo in the last two months, and uh, the other thing that affects the growth rate is funding new buildings. Funding new buildings only asks for a certain amount of time, and it's pointless doing it multiple times within the same purchase. You can help a town grow by putting out roads and making sure it doesn't get strangled by track, sea, steep hills, or any sort of items around it. Big, clear, open spaces will help it grow and expand. Misconceptions are that if you do more different types of... Um, Items going in and out of the city, like goods and mail, that it will go, uh, that it will grow more. That is not true. And also, having any more stations than those five do not affect the growth rate at all. That is another myth misconception. Um, you can, any more than five doesn't make a difference. It's just those five. Well, there we go. That's all about towns and cities and how to look at their information and how to grow them. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, uh, tutorial and it was useful for you. If it was useful, please consider giving it a like and I will see you sometime soon. But that's all from now. Thank you very much for watching. And from me, goodbye.